So good morning, we are live today with uh, Dalibor Pretenich uh, from uh, Tenerife. We are uh, Extrax uh, Energy from Tenerife and uh, our friend Dalibor, uh, an extreme fitness uh, instructor, <laughs> live from uh, Croatia. Good morning, Dalibor. Good, good afternoon, it's 2.30 p.m. <laughs> ah, yes, it's afternoon p.m., one hour different time, and it's correct, it's correct. Yeah, it's, it's not that so, big of a difference. So nice to have you here on our channel. We're going to be in your, in your channel as well. And so who is Dalibor Petrinic? Who is Dalibor Petrinic? Dalibor Petrinic is just a name. It's not who I am, you know. It's okay. same as, it's same as uh, Daniel Silipardi is just a name. It's not who you are, you know. It's just something that we are given at birth. But basically we are all just a consciousness uh, that came to this uh, planet and just got this body and to enjoy everything around us but you know we are we are not our names we are not our religion we are not our uh, parents we are not our society nothing you know we are just a conscious pure conscious and uh, most people don't realize it you know because when you are born you are just this pure innocent conscience that came to this world you don't have your mind you don't have your opinions you don't have anything but as you grow older everything got, gets programmed in your brain so that's why people by the time they're for example, 30 years old, they're 99% programmed. I, I don't know, for example, if you watch the movie Matrix, it's not a movie, it's a documentary, you know, people don't realize it. There's so much truth in that, in there, so much truth in that movie because everybody's living in a Matrix, you know. So by the time you're 30, you, you're not uh, you're not that innocent conscious anymore, no, because you are full of scarves from the from the relationship with your parents, from your childhood, for, from uh, being hurt in love, from having some traumas or some sort from uh, negative experiences, you know, and all that basically conforms your identity, but that's not you. And that's why it's so important to work uh, on yourself, you know, on your mind, because uh, that's the only that's the only way you can progress. And uh, slowly, slowly, the consciousness is starting to raise up. People are starting to wake up, as I like to say. It's a long process. It doesn't come overnight. But uh, the hardest thing is, you know, to be honest with yourself, you know, being honest with yourself and starting working yourself and separate the ego you know because 99 percent of the times you're just on uh, autopilot uh, you are you are driving in unconscious mode and uh, most decisions are ego based or emotions based you know and uh, when you sort that out basically you see how simple it is to live you know and how little you need so uh, dollar pet is just the name you know and uh, i'm a conscious uh, getting more and more aware every day and uh, my main how, uh, how would I define myself as, as a teacher, I think, as someone who, who is here to wake up the people, help them uh, realize everything that they are capable of. I'm not a classical fitness trainer for me, even though I am a personal trainer for me, training comes last, you know, first is working on yourself, second is proper nutrition, meditation, then the last is basically training. But most of the people get it wrong because first they start training, they think they're gonna fix everything else, but training is just like you know, finishing the diamond. Everything else, the base is working on yourself and eating properly, you know, because there is no training that can, that can, uh, imp that can uh, be better than uh, lousy nutrition. That's what people don't understand. You know, people look at training as a punishment for what they eaten, or you know, as a way to you know level it up. But you know, when you're 20, maybe you can get away with some stuff, but when you're 30, 40. Everything comes back, back, as you know yourself. <laughs> yes, I, know, I know myself as well. True. So this is your main philosophy, you know, to be conscious of of uh, your uh, human being, your soul. Exactly, Just, exactly. Yeah. And we are we are so powerful. People don't realize it. You know, I, we are all gods. You know, universe is within us. You know, we don't need to go to the church or anywhere else to 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 realize that. But you know, again, the whole system is made so people are made slaves and uh, insecure and. Uh, fat and uh, sick, you know, the pharmaceutical system and uh, the, the whole supplementary industry and the food industry, they are all working very, very hard for decades, you know, just to make people sick and uh, fat and with all this information, 95% information so you can read on, online is fake, 95 of the researchers are fake because they are paid by pharmaceutical and food industries to give them the results they want, you know, so you have to be really, really cautious and Unfortunately, internet brought us a lot of good stuff because there is a lot of information today, but also it brought us a lot of bad stuff. 
because all of these informations are false, as I said. And you know, people, it's not, it's no wonder that people are lost, you know, because they don't know what to believe anymore. One day you hear this, one day you hear the other one, but at the end, it comes down to very, very simple things. And that is basically that all food is poison for our body, all food, nobody is right, vegan or carnivores, or whatever. all food in general is poison. The goal is to eat as minimum food as you can, of course, to uh, reject all sugar, all flour, or bread, all pasta, which is hard for Italians, I know. Yeah. <laughs> minimize, minimize animal products, you know, minimize animal products. Uh, drink just water, maybe some green tea. That's it. No, 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 no juices. No, nothing. No, nothing concentrated. And basically, do a post, post daily. Do a fasting daily. So, for example, if you have 24 hours in a day, 16 hours you wouldn't eat. You would eat just in that period of eight hours, maybe two meals. And that's the most important uh, uh, way to not just. It's not a diet. It's, it's a way of life because our our bodies are amazing machines that that can do everything. We just have to let them. So our bodies heal in the best way when we don't give them any food. The same is with the animals. If you look, if the animal feels sick, if a dog, if a dog feels sick, he doesn't want to eat, you know, because he knows the body has to heal itself from the inside. We have amazing mechanism that allows us to heal ourselves from the inside, but the people are constantly eating. They are addicts from food, especially sugar and carbohydrates. And that's why then that's why they never give a body a chance to recover itself you know that's why i often say imagine your body is a car you know and uh, people say okay and i say well your car is more important than your body you know i said yeah, no way i said okay listen uh, when was the last time you serviced your car and they say maybe on six months one year two years when was the last time you serviced your body what do you mean i mean when was the last time you did a fasting for your body you didn't eat, for example, two or three days. Oh my God, no, I, I never eat less, more than five hours, you know? So that's the first thing. What kind of fuel you put in your car? I put the best fuel. What kind of fuel you put in your body? You don't care because you think, you know, it, it doesn't matter what kind of food I put, you know, you eat junk food, you eat sugar, it doesn't matter. So those are the two simple things, you know? Your liver is like an oil filter for your car. When was the last time you cleaned your liver? The liver is the main, main organ that processes everything, you know? Transfers the fat and everything. So those are just some of the things, you know, and uh, when I talk to people, some understand, some like, okay, yes, but still they don't, they live in the comfort zone, they don't want to get out, but for most people, unfortunately, they come to the point where they don't have no more choice, they become either so sick or paralyzed, they cannot move from the bed, that they start thinking, okay, it's time to change something. But I think it's much easier to prevent than to, than to treat, as says the doctor says, so it's, it will be much more simpler. And it's going to get harder and harder now because these new generations are all addicts uh, online world. You have these hoovers, so people, children are not even walking anymore. They're just driving around on hoovers. People don't realize how dangerous is that also because you're making robots. Artificial intelligence is very real. It's already very, very much uh, developed. Just, they, they just don't talk about it so much. But uh, a lot of things that you watch in SF movies, a lot of that is true, trust me. A lot of that is true. So they are slowly preparing the people. So. Honestly, I don't know how this world is going to look in 2030, but I'm going to be ready, whatever it comes on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so you already answered to a couple of questions that was about your philosophy, mm -hmm. about the, how, how important is the food in, uh, yes. in your, uh, your training so, day? So important, so important. Even if you don't train, food is like so, so important. And I'm, and I'm so, so, so surprised, so shocked, you know, sometimes. I rarely go to the supermarket because there's there is nothing you can buy in the supermarket that is good for you. And but sometimes when I go, I just look at people and they're buying these uh, bags, uh, yeah. full packets, uh, boxes of milk. You know, milk like the worst thing you can put in your body. Mm -hmm. And after the age of three, we cannot even process milk anymore. We are the only mam mammals in the world that still drink milk after mm -hmm. they a little bit grown up. So you know, it's all, all again milk industry was pushing it for decades, you know, making us believe we need uh, calcium and everything from the milk, <laughs> but yeah. it's such a lie, you know, there is no calcium in that homogenized, pasteurized milk because it gets heated up so much to kill everything inside it, that it's just a very, very big uh, stress on your uh, digestive system. So dairy in general, cheeses and everything that comes from the cow, it should be avoided. Maybe some goat or sheep cheeses can, can go from now and then. But so. in, gener in general, to clean your to clean your digestive system, you have to get rid of uh, animal products at least for some time. 
ideally at least for 10 days. And then just uh, drink pure distilled water with a piece, uh, piece of uh, pure uh, sea salt or magnesium chloride. And basically just drink it throughout the day for a couple of days. And uh, amazing things happen after day five, amazing things happen. You know, people think they cannot do it anymore, but if they stay strong here by day 10, you're a completely new person and your body is clean from the inside and, and uh, you will never have a sugar craze anymore, junk cravings and you will have so much energy because your body will start to uh, take the fat in your body for energy. That's what people don't understand because we have so much energy trapped in our body, in our fat cells, you know. Same. But we cannot access those fat cells because we are constantly eating carbohydrates. And carbohydrates is basically, it's like a very fast fuel, you know, it's like uh, the, f the fuel that gets burned like a match, very fast. That's why after two or three hours, if you eat pasta, you're hungry again, because it was just empty carbs that doesn't give your body any vitamins, any minerals, and your body is not nourished, and you feel hungry again. But if you eat, for example, fats, if you eat whole eggs, uh, and that's very, that's very nutritious because it's protein and carbs without, uh, protein and fats without carbs, and it's double the calories than the than the pro than the carbs. The fats have nine calories per gram, and carbohydrates and protein have four grams. It's much more satisfying meal. So we should focus our, our, our nutrition on good fats, using uh, hemp oil, coconut oil, olive oil, eating olives, eating uh, coconuts, eating uh, hemp seeds. Uh, hemp protein is a good choice. Also the pumpkin pumpkin seeds, pumpkin protein, eggs, uh, if you have good prosciutto, I know in, the, in Italy you have it, uh, it's also very important that it's uh, without uh, conservants and without the additives, you know, just just, uh, just the meat and some salt and some seasoning, that's all. Everything else is extra. And uh, cheeses, if we use it's sheep or goat cheese, it's a good, it's a good option. We should avoid dairy products, as I said before. And uh, beans, beans is also a good option. Beans, chickpeas, kidney beans I like the most. And that's basically, you know, my nutrition is very, very simple. It's only a few of the few of the things that I eat, and I eat one or two meals per day, depending on depending on how I feel, you know. But ne I never eat before one o'clock. I always fast in the, in the morning, and I always train in fasted state. I always train uh, without eating anything. I just drink uh, one espresso before training. And that's it. I never, I never eat before training because if you eat before training, your body is gonna waste energy to digest the food that you're eating. So if your body is wasting energy on the food, it doesn't give energy for your workout. So that's in the in the beginning, you already you are having a deficit in your workout because you cannot give all your energy to the workout. And uh, so it's very, very important. So this is one of the, for example, you were saying before that there are so many uh, wrong informations in on internet. This is what you were saying, for example, yes. now that they tell you that you should you should eat uh, a lot of carbohydrates before training, especially <clears throat> the bodybuilding, and yes. uh, when you have to to work out very strong. So that's totally unnecessary to to have this kind of uh, food before training. No, no, it's again, it's uh, the whole the whole industry and the fitness. It's same as any other industry in the in, uh, pharmaceutical industry and the uh, food industry and. Uh, supplement industry and governments, politics, uh, banks, they are all they all created this system to, to, to spread lies, you know, because their goal is to make you fat, miserable uh, and sick. They don't want you to die soon because they want to make money of you. So <laughs> the, lo the longer you are sick, it's better for them because they can sell you medications and everything. But just, just uh, imagine for a second, use your common sense as I like to tell people, okay, if somebody told you, you don't need a lot of food, you don't need you don't need any equipment to be in the best shape of your life. What would they make of you? You don't need medication. How can they make money of you? You don't need twenty pair of trousers. You don't need twenty pair of shirts. You don't need expensive cars. You don't need expensive boats. You don't need expensive expensive houses. How can they benefit from you? Because the whole system we are living it's a material world, and that's that's what most people don't understand. And it's a very thin line when you cross into that world without even knowing it. It's okay, we have to have money for some things, it's okay. 
but it's, it is proven that everything above your basic needs doesn't make you any happier. Because the more money you have, the more money you're going to spend. It's a law. There is nobody that makes a lot of money and saves. It's just spending because, okay, I'm making a spending, and 95% of those things you don't need. You never use. So, so, yeah. when, so when, <coughs> when the people, when the athletes come to, to your gym, they don't only found... Uh, uh, they don't only find uh, a trainer, they find a yes. mentor, a lifestyle exactly. trainer. Exactly, exactly. Um, there is so much uh, now with the, with, the, with the big rise of social networks and everything, and especially on Facebook, I'm looking every day, some new coaches appear, and the, the, the word life coach kind of got a little bit, uh, I don't know, prostitute, as, as, as I like to say. So I don't like to call myself uh, like a life coach. First of all, I'm a teacher, educator, you know, and basically, uh, I can I can share my experience, uh, a lifetime experience of working with people and working on myself, and uh, help people get out of the matrix. You know that that will be my my main goal because uh, there is a lot of this. You know, people finish one um, NLP uh, seminar or course, and then they like to call themselves life coaches or something. You know, because and they all they all learn the same thing, and they just basically manipulating the masses. So I don't, I don't like to call myself like life coach, but more like a, a teacher, educator, motivator, and someone who who shows people what they are capable of, you know. Okay. So why is different your training style compared to the others? Compared to the others? Well, uh, now, uh, last, last decade, uh, there's a lot of been a rise in popularity of bodyweight training. So a lot of the gymnastics is coming back. Uh, uh, finally after being discarded for so long bodybuilding is always going to be popular because bodybuilding is uh, ego building for most men because their primary goal is aesthetics because they all want to look on, good on the beach you know <laughs> in short sleeves and they are, they, it's their primary goal I mean it's okay if you're gonna be honest 99% of people of course everybody would be happier to look good but it doesn't have to be the first cause first cause has to be health and uh, decreasing of any pain. That's your main goal, how to be functional for as long as you can. And then the aesthetics come by itself, you know, if you fix the nutrition and working on yourself, as I said, that's the most important thing, the aesthetics will come by itself. And uh, my, my uh, method, basically, I took the best from all other training methods and put it in one, one, uh, one concept. It's a DP fitness concept, and I've been uh, yeah, I've been uh, uh, highly, highly researching it and developing it, and I think uh, beginning maybe next year I will start uh, with my educations and seminars uh, all around the, the Europe and uh, pro probably the world. It's a big project. I have to work a lot on it, and uh, but I wanted to wait because I really wanted to to, to <coughs> give all the best info because uh, there was so much info that I that I had to process myself because I, I went through all those stages, you know. The gyms, the bodybuilding, the ego building, you know, the muscles. And when you basically, when you do the full, the full circuit, you come back uh, to where you started when you were maybe like, you know, a teenager or a kid and you're playing in the park and you realize that uh, training is movement, training is, uh, doesn't have to be called training at all. It's just supposed to be like a child play, you know. So my, my philosophy is a lot of bodyweight movements, a lot of movements on the floor, crawling, animal movements, uh, mimicking uh, animals. Like uh, bear, bear walk, uh, frog, uh, apes, monkey, gorilla, lizard. It's all very, very effective exercises. And when people first try them, they, they, they never succeed. And it's really funny because if you look at children, you know, when they play, crawling on the floor, making saltos and everything, it's so, it's so natural for them. And it was natural for us when we were ch children. But as we grew older, uh, we got stuck in this world that I just mentioned before, and we got completely, completely separated from our, from our true self. You know who we truly are, an, in, an innocent uh, consciousness that came to this world. So, uh, our, the, the only way you can really, truly be happy uh, and content with yourself is is getting back as close as you can to that uh, childhood. You know, and that means uh, separating the ego and truly working on yourself and your issues you know being honest to yourself okay what what created me the way i am today you know who created me it's it, i didn't create myself you know it's it's all those experiences that i had through my uh 
through my life. That's why when clients come to me first time, I always like to uh, ask them, uh, how is your relationship with your dad and your mother? It's so important, you know, because uh, those are the most important uh, period of our time, you know, uh, kindergarten and uh, primary school and then high school. Those are the uh, period when you get developed as a personnel, you know, and uh, it's so easy to, to understand the pattern, you know, once once you get into that, because everybody has issue. A lot of uh, children uh, that are parents are divorced, you know, a lot of children that uh, they don't see their dad much or they don't see their mom much or they lost their dad or they lost their mom. Those are those are those are people that grow up with issues, you know, and they, basically they just, just they just put those issues under the carpet, as I said. But uh, you can only put dirt under the carpet so much. Uh, after a while, the dirt gets bigger. And then when you're, for example, 30 years old, some questions start to rise. And then when you're 40, a lot of questions start to rise. And that's why you call the middle, middle age crisis. It's not middle age crisis. It's just that some of the questions started to show up. And then what people do? Most of the people do the wrong thing because there is so much distractions today. Okay. And then what they do? They find a 20 year younger girlfriend or they buy a sports car or they buy a bike or they go somewhere you know, to Himalaya or something. They think they're going to escape, but you cannot escape yourself. You know, if you're on, if you're on Himalaya, you're not in peace there because that's the peace from Himalayas. You don't have your internal peace, you know? So no matter where you are in the world, if you're not happy with yourself, you cannot escape it. So that's why we st when, we st when I start working with, with my clients, it's always, uh, of course, not with all. Some just people want to get inside it and, and you see you cannot reach them and they just want to train and that's okay, I adjust. But for most, I like to, I like to work on that uh, mind level because uh, that's, that's what created the issue. You know, if, some, if somebody has 20 kilos to lose, it's emotions. It's primarily of the emotions that he, he's, he, he was eating too much or she and the stress. So first we have to take care of that and training just, you know, low impact and working a lot of mobility and everything. And then the weight comes of, of, for itself. And 99% uh, of other trainers, if they see people uh, who want to lose 20 kilos, they just want to kill them on training, you know, like CrossFit or on high intensity. You know, see, you see people sweating, they're crawling on the floor, they cannot get out of bed next day. And some people like it. It's amazing. And, and I'm so surprised because I think, I don't know, maybe deep inside they're a masochist or something, you know, but people think if tomorrow nothing is pain, nothing is, you know, inflamed, it was, it was bad training, you know, but no, it's, it's completely different mentality uh, of the, for the fitness today. But as I said, it's still a slow process. It's going to take a lot of time to change people's heads because they are programmed for, for decades. And uh, not everybody is going to get it, unfortunately. So, you know, just some of us are going to be awakened. That, that's the sad fact. But, you know, it's how it is. You have to accept it. So, in general, that will be, that's why I'm different. You know, primarily working on, on the mind and uh, uh, the body comes uh, later. But the mind and the proper nutrition, that's, that's the keys, you know. And uh, exercise is just like, you know, the third part. I mean, important part, of course, because people are sitting a lot. But uh, it's just, uh, it's the least important part in, in those three. And three, for example, most people train like, you know, when they're training three days a week for one hour. So imagine three days a week you're training for one hour and every day you are sitting eight to ten hours in a desk or something. How can you expect to, uh, to, to, to get results from, from three hours a week? It's ridiculous, you know, especially with the lifestyle we have today. Forty, fifty years ago when people were working in the field, that's what they, that was their work. They didn't sit in the desk, and that's why it's so different. You know, when people talk today, oh, my parents did this. My yes, but my parents did completely different uh, uh, way of life. You know, they were active. They were working field. Even if they were eating bread every day, it was the bread that they made themselves. You know, they would they didn't buy it uh, in the store full of additives and uh, other other shit. You know, so it's uh, very very important for people to realize it that everything has changed in the last uh, three or four decades and it's, it's changed, changed for the worse, you know, because the yeah. food we eat is GMO, it's plastic, nothing, everything is fake. Practically, there's no more organic food anywhere in the world because every day, everywhere soil is so uh, contaminated from the air that, that, they, that they spray us and uh, from the water and from everything. So it's impossible. You just have to deal with it. You just have to find the least, the least uh, damaged or poisoned food. but completely clean it's just a myth there is no such thing and uh, that's basically it you know just this is, <coughs> this is a very good point I think that I have been uh, <coughs> sorry I have been lucky 
uh, like a, a one year ago, maybe it was something like that. Uh, that I've been able to train with you for a certain period. No, especially we the people have to know that we were living very close, and we were we start getting to know each other with the dogs, with the with the lifestyle and everything, and we start training together. No, and uh, we're helping each other in different way. No, uh, on both way. And when I start training with um, with Dalibor, well, I uh, <coughs> start seeing the the difference between going to the gym, no, and do the exercise. It doesn't matter which kind. It was a different kind of approach to the to the gymnastic, no. When I was I was asking, I need more, I want more, and, and this how many times? And the time in noise is already past a minute. No, I have to start. Yes, no, and <coughs> everything was because it was coming more from the bodybuilding, no, and uh, but it was very damaged from uh, from different lifestyle. Yes, from my old work. Uh, Yes. And they have many little problems. A little by little, we, we 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 start correcting them. And I remember when we were doing the, the especially the um, the warming up for me it was amazing because it was was kind of playing, no, like yeah. the rhythm and the other movements. And uh, I, I remember when you were doing a conference here in Tenerife, opening a place in the south of Tenerife. Then the people, when you ask to the people how many times. You should train for a week, no, and uh, and for how long? And you ask this question to the people, and the people are saying two times, three times, four <laughs> times, etc., etc., no, and how long, no, and but especially, and I, remember, I still clearly remember the the answer. There was kind of uh, your car. Does it does it need to have you you have to manage and take care of your car until it's alive? So. Exactly. Your body is the same. You have to train it for the rest of your life, always. There's not like a preparation to the to go to the beach or preparation for summertime. No. So this was something difficult to 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 understand. Something that was not easy to make the step. No. Starting that was, as you said before, the the, the mental step, the mental change is much more different than doing a pull up. Or doing it on a machine. That's not the the difference of the uh, of the health that your training in uh, is giving. No. Exactly. Uh, so is calisthenics uh, is is going around the world. Calisthenics, body weight, um, elastic, by elastic band, uh, yoga, or they related to, to to yoga and different kind of. Why do you think that is? Is just because of internet or? Do you think that it because people start listening to their body uh, first, and then having confirmation by other friends that are listening to their body feelings? Of course, uh, the internet is such a powerful media, and without the internet, uh, it would never be popular again because nobody would know about it. You know, but uh, it's uh, it's growing so fast, and then you, every day you can see some videos on YouTube, and you have some guys that started started the, the process. You know. Like Frank Medrano and uh, Ido Portal, you know those are great guys that started the bodyweight movement and everything. So uh, without the internet, of course, nobody would know about it. But I think it's because it's so natural, you know. You're just using your own body, and it feels so good. It feels so natural. It's not artificial. You're not sitting on any machine. You're not doing some movements that are restricted or, or guided or isolated. You are moving your body in all in all in all uh, directions, in all angles. And that's what basically we are designed for. We are very, very similar to animals. Just people don't realize it. And uh, but we were living. Uh, we are still living in cages. You know that's why we are not happy. You know we, we are designed to be wild and to move in all directions. But all these, all these rules from like society and everything just made us, you know, live it like we are living in dungeon. We think we are free, but basically we are not because we are all, we are all uh, attached to something. You know, no, it's very, very. Rarely that you see someone who is truly free, you know, and uh, I think that that's why people are so happy because it's deep inside of inside of us. We feel it's something that we are born to do, that the way the life should be, you know. But uh, you know, from all the religion, especially and the government, the, the, from the childhood, you are being taught, you know, the life should be hard, life should be difficult, you know, you must go through pain or suffering to achieve something, and it's completely different mentality, and that's why people 
people like to stay in their comfort zone because you know they, they are associating change with uh, pain you know so it's very hard to get into the mind okay it's not going to be comfortable probably in the beginning to change your lifestyle but uh, it's going to be very much worth it because you are going to be on the uh, on the right uh, track okay and uh, what can we say to the let's say normal people like me to to motivate the to motivate them to to train you know mm -hmm. and because as you said before people come just when they have problems they come when they are fat they come when yes. they don't look good you know so what how do you think that we can what can we say to the people to let them understand that they have to prevent how can we motivate the people to to understand this key yes. order that's that's the million dollar question <laughs> but uh, the most important thing, the, the way I approach that uh, the question is, I tell people uh, you have to realize it's it's a lifestyle. You know, it's not a program, it's not a quick fix, it's a way of life. Uh, and for most people, I like, uh, like to tell them, okay, just think of it uh, same as you go to work every day. Same thing you have to do with your body. You have to maintain your body because without the body, you cannot go to work. Without work, you cannot make money. Without money cannot be alive you know I mean you can but that's another subject that's <laughs> another subject yeah you, if you go into that deep state of uh, mind but uh, for most people they don't understand that their body is basically the vehicle that that makes them possible to achieve anything else you know and that's uh, when you look at the medical expenses uh, and uh, drug ex drug uh, um, profit yearly that's like in billions and billions of dollars it, it's, it's just in America it's ridiculous what kind of money goes just uh, to give people um, medication and to make them uh, uh, be able to do work you know that's why I think uh, in the next 10 years a lot of jobs will be replaced by robots because they don't get sick or anything else you know and uh, today <laughs> today yeah yeah I mean it's it, it would be already possible today but uh, the downside of that is that the robots do not make money and if they don't make money they don't spend it you know so again you have two points you know people people get sick but people make money and spend money and, and it's all big circle you know but uh, most of the jobs if you look at realistically can be done by robots especially you know where you know everything in the industry and the stores and everything and then you know yeah I think it's going in that direction but we'll see how long they will postpone that and uh, uh, the basic thing I, I, I tell them is just listen. Uh, it's not a, something that you wish to go negotiate it. It's something it, when you say must, people don't like that word. You know, I, I, that's why I tell people uh, don't eat broccoli. Then it's a good chance they're going to eat it. <laughs> but if I say don't eat tiramisu, they're going to eat it. <laughs> you know. So everything that you forbid someone, people like to do it. You know. So it's kind of a mind game, but. Everything that, as I said, the hardest thing for people is getting out of their comfort zone, you know. And the comfort zone is when you come come from work and you want to sit on your couch, watch television, and eat some junk food. That's easy, you know. But the hard part is getting to the gym, or uh, doesn't have to be gym. You can train at home, especially now. That's why I like bodyweight so much because you can train at home. But the downside of that is how to motivate yourself, you know. Uh, I have a lot of. Um, online training programs you know where I where I basically offer my mentorship and leadership to people and uh, the hardest part is always that motivation because I give them the videos I give them uh, the food and everything and also I give them what the motivation but I cannot be beside them every day and tell them okay listen you have to do this you have to that's something that you have to do for yourself you know and uh, it's very hard for people as I said because it's a comfort zone is always pulling you back you know because that's the way you are programmed and every day you are getting back in that program so that's why every day you have to try to get out of the the matrix you know and it's hard it takes a lot of uh, work you know and that's why people don't like anything that they cannot achieve in uh, one month or two months you know they have to understand okay it's a lifelong journey especially when you train body weight you know to to master your body it is going to take more than your life you know because there's so much things uh, you can do I'm sure you we watched some of the shows when you have those acrobats and everything when you look at what they're doing it's amazing you know they're, they're holding each other on hands they're balancing on the head and then you see basically what what we are capable of you know what are the limits of the human body there is no limits the limit is just here in the mind and uh, the mind is always going to give up before the body because the body can take so much torture it's it's almost uh, 
we are the strongest animal, stronger than horses, then we can survive everything. You know? It's just the mind that gives up the first. And the mind is programmed through the media, through the television, through the internet, through the newspaper. That's why I say the first thing that, that you need to do when you want to get healthy is throw up your TV out of the window. It's the first thing because people don't, don't realize that there are subliminal messages every time you turn on the TV, every time you watch a movie, there are some messages that are hidden in that movie that you don't even realize it, but they are working on your subconscious. Same thing is with the music. In a lot of music, very popular music, you have subconscious messages that you don't even realize, that you don't hear, but they are working on your subconscious. There is a study that was done when they were uh, losing some sales in big markets in the America, and then they made a tape with the subliminal messages that they were telling people that were in the in the in the markets buy more or you are hungry you know you don't hear that but it's on subconscious level and they increase like 70 percent in one month you know so it's just crazy but when you talk to this uh, when you talk these things to some people they're thinking oh my god you are crazy you know this this is like conspiracy theory and that's the biggest problem because we are living in a lie for so long that the truth seems uh, amazing it's like conspiracy theory you know it's, it seems so unreal and then then you realize oh my god i'm living in a matrix you know Everything around me is so 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 fake, you know, such a lie. So that's why I tell him the the waking up part is scary, you know, when you realize, my God, you know, what is this, you know? And the more you work on yourself, basically, the harder it is to be around people. That's the downside, you know, because you're gonna lose your friends and everything because then they're gonna think, well, what is this Daniel? He's crazy. What is he talking about? You know, come back, be with us, you know, have a beer. Stay in the comfort zone. This is where we are. Don't train because you know I don't train. I don't. I don't want to you know be like intimidated. That's why a lot of people lose. Uh, they don't have a support from their partners. You know, people that should love them and everything. You know, because for example, if a wife said, "Okay, I'm gonna start a training program. I'm gonna lose weight," and the husband, you know, like he teases her and he's not saying, "Okay, great." I'm no, no, because he thinks, "Okay, then I'm gonna have to start also something." You know, so that's a very big problem. Um, emotional motivation and support from your loved ones are very very important when you when you're engaging on a fitness journey and that's what a lot of people lack or if you don't have a partner or, or have it in a society that's why you have so much uh, motivational speakers and everything today online because people need motivation daily it's like showering you know people need to do it daily and same like gratitude every day you need to remind yourself I'm so grateful you know, just to wake up in the morning you know but people take everything for granted you know because we are we never, we are never satisfied with what we have. It's it's a human curse, and it's inside of us. And we really need to work a lot of it uh, to 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 be able to deal with it. You know, if you have the best car you, that you dreamed of, you there's gonna come some new car that is even faster. You're gonna want that car. If you have the most beautiful wife, great. But after a while, you know, if you eat scampis every day. You're gonna get bored with scampi. Same is with prosciutto. Same is with everything. The best thing is everything gets bored. So that's why you know it's very important then that you realize that it's all distractions and that basically we need very little to be happy. So the goal, so how to motivate, how to motivate people, basically, as I said, you need they need to realize it's a lifestyle change. It's not a quick fix. It's not something that they are thinking about doing. It's something that they should do because they're going to get sick, they're going to get fat, or they already are too, too fat because of the way of life. They are sitting a lot, and uh, it's very important to, to show them, okay, listen, this is not going to be uh, killing you. It's not going to be high-intensity training. For starters, I just want you to start walking every day in nature. Start with 5-10 minutes. Increase every day by 5 minutes. Come come to one hour. When you come to one hour, increase to two hours. Spend every day two hours in the nature. Go go somewhere in the forest, in the woods, and hug a tree. Hug a tree for 10 minutes. People don't realize how much energy you can you can uh, you receive from a tree because trees are energy sources. It's like charging your uh, smartphone. Try it next time when you go somewhere to the woods and just hug a tree like this 10 minutes. You're going to feel like, you know, completely rejuvenate. So uh, those are important things. And that, okay, Let's just start drinking water a little bit more. You know, you don't tell them, okay, tomorrow you start drinking a gallon of water. No, just start drinking a little bit more water, pure water per day. Cut down on the sodas, cut down on the alcohol, you know. Don't, don't, you know, don't tell them, okay, tomorrow you have to stop. No, because then they get stressed and then they don't do anything. Just slowly, little by little, you decrease, you know. So in, in maybe one month, we are already 
decreased a lot of things, you know, and that's that's what works works for most people that they, they they easily can transfer to the new lifestyle, you know, and for some they just like to cut. I say this is it, I'm done, and I'm going uh, to change my lifestyle as of today, and that's very good. But those people are always in the minority, so the goal is to uh, to to give them gentle gentle approach, <laughs> gentle touch. Yes. Okay. Uh, to end our our chat, uh, so we need to tell to our people that first comes the mind, and then the body will follow. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. In everything, in everything, not just fitness. And now our friends, the people that are looking now our this video, can follow you on um, on internet. Uh. Yes, I have an Instagram account. I have a LinkedIn. I have a Google Plus. I have a Facebook. Anything that is online, I have. It. <laughs> I have okay. YouTube. I have a YouTube uh, with over 2,000 videos on YouTube. Uh, some are in, some are in Croatian videos. Some uh, some are English. I, I film a little bit Croatian, a little bit English. And uh, really, there's a lot of videos, a lot of instructional videos. Uh, I offer online services. If somebody wants a personalized uh, online trainer, I offer that as well. I offer personalized uh, menus, one week menus to lose weight or for any for any fitness goal. That's uh, that's one of my most um, common services. So basically, you know, whoever wants to uh, help, I am here for them. You know. Okay, so you can personalize just to make our people understand. <clears throat> yeah, you can personalize through yeah. internet by yeah. seeing this person, talking with these people through Skype. You can have a, a special diet, special training, just for for them with different yeah. scales of. Huh? Exactly, exactly. I send them. I send them a questionnaire that they fill out so that I can get to uh, know them a little bit better. Then I arrange a Skype call, call like this that I'm doing with you. And then we talk a little bit. I, I question them about them to, to, to see how is the energy, how they, if they have any traumas or anything, why they contacted me, what they want, what is their goal. And then we, we, if, we, if I see that the person is okay, then we start uh, uh, developing a, a relationship and start developing a program. So basically, okay. that's that's the next best thing to having a personal trainer because the only downside is I cannot be there beside you to, to, to keep an eye on you. But everything else I can give you, I can give you the motivation, the the knowledge, and uh, everything else. It's just basically, it's a very good way of uh, having uh, having some guidance because most people are lost. You know, they go on internet, uh, type type in YouTube. Okay, I see this exercise. I I, I do this exercise. But what is the point? You know, you don't know the program, you don't know the structure, and it's also very dangerous because you can get injured. You know, they see some guy, okay, he's doing a handstand, let me try, and then they fall on their head. You know, because these things, these skills, these bodyweight skills, some people put on YouTube, it looks easy, but they are they were doing it for years. You know, until they they master the movement, and that's what people don't understand. With body weight, it's very slow progress, and you really have to know what you're doing. With weights, you know, you put just two kilos more and you know your progress, you know. But with body weight, yeah. it's a lot different. That's why it's very important to have a, a good coach and to have a proper guidance. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to have this uh, chat with you and then to see you again. And hopefully with the new project, maybe you come also around Europe, around the... Yes. Uh, uh, the world you made a stop in, uh, in Tenerife. We will come to Tenerife for sure. It's uh, eternal spring, so I like the sun. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay, guys. All thank right. you very much. All thank right. you very much from uh, Xtrax and Dot Energy. Thank you very much, and uh, see you soon. Yes. Thank you, Daniel. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao.